For many of us runners, marathon training will soon be in full swing. Whether you're running to compete or your goal is to finish your first marathon, the most important part is to enjoy the process over the coming months and get to race day injury free. With the right training plan, there should be a good balance between progression in weekly run volume, cross training to build strength and recovery time. Get this right and you'll be rewarded with a satisfying race come the big day. There are, however, a number of common pitfalls that marathon runners encounter, ruining the chances of them successfully achieving their marathon goals. In no particular order, here are five of my favorite marathon training tips to help you run to your potential. Some of the biggest improvements I've seen in my marathon runners haven't been as a result of dramatically increasing weekly mileage or adding more speed sessions, although these are both important factors, but from becoming stronger physically as runners. The simple fact is that when many runners approach, approach marathon training, the mind might be willing, but the body is often less than able. Often instead of a 16 or 18 week marathon training program, we work from a 12 week program, preceded by four to six weeks of specific marathon preparation training. This preparation phase focuses heavily on run specific strength workouts in the gym and out in the park with medicine balls, resistance bands, kettlebells, etc. During these weeks, the run sessions are minimal volume, just enough to maintain fitness and they're more focused on technique. If this sounds interesting to you, then the 30 day challenge as part of the Kinetic Revolution website is well worth a look. I'll leave a link in the description. I'm a firm believer that runners of all levels benefit hugely from the resilience and strength that this preparation phase develops. It enables them to maximize the benefits of the running weeks laid ahead without as much risk of injury. You've probably heard this before, but junk miles really do hold little value. But what do I mean by junk miles? Look at it this way. Every run session you complete should have a distinct purpose, be it a long aerobic run, a tempo session, an interval session. You should know why you're setting out on each running workout and what you're looking to get out of it. If you're just clocking up the miles with no specific structure, then chances are you're not training as smartly as you should be. The temptation for less experienced runners is to panic about the impending marathon and add extra mileage when what their bodies really need is rest and adequate recovery between run sessions. It's usually far better to fill your running week with a number of key, well-executed sessions with purpose, balancing that out with good rest rather than trying to squeeze together lots of mediocre runs depending on what your time allows. I, like so many runners, can be so guilty of this one. The majority of us know that in simple terms, our long, steady runs should be completed at a relatively easy aerobic pace while the comparatively shorter tempo sessions should be completed at a harder, faster pace. The problem is that in reality, so many of us spend a great deal of time training in this gray area between those training zones that provide us the, with the most benefit. My good friend and coaching colleague, Neil Scholes, terms this well as mid-pace mediocrity. In short, I often see athletes who ruin their easy runs by running too hard, leaving themselves so fatigued for much of the rest of the training week that they can't push themselves hard enough on what should be their more intense sessions. It took me a long time to realize how easy my long run should be to feel to be truly aerobic. Before this, I'd been running these long, steady sessions way too fast. After 16 miles, at what I thought was an easy pace on a Sunday, I'd be in a zip position where I'd need until Wednesday or Thursday to recover properly. This would wreck the quality of other important run sessions I had planned for the week, tempo sessions, interval sessions. As soon as I learnt what running at a comfortably aerobic pace felt like, and that felt super slow, I discovered the absolute revelation of waking up on a Monday morning after a long Sunday run, feeling ready to go. Personally, this is one of the biggest positive learning experience I've had in my running over the years, and something that so many runners would really benefit to go and work on. Stick to the plan. Sounds simple enough, right? But we all know that life gets in the way from time to time. In an ideal world, we'd all have a personally written marathon training plan and execute it to the letter. What happens though if you have to stay late at work or you get sick? I find that it helps prioritize the runs in your week, knowing which are your key sessions and which sessions, if it absolutely comes to it, are more okay to drop if the worst happens. As a general rule in marathon training, the weekly long run is obviously the most important. Try to avoid skipping these as your body needs to build that aerobic endurance and ultimately time on the feet through these long, steady runs. 
You also need to maintain the consistency in increasing the durations of these long runs over the weeks to enable you to progressively build up to one or more 20, 22 milers in this training block. While sticking to the training plan is the name of the game, keep building up those long runs and don't fret if you have to skip the odd run workout in the week. If this happens, the worst thing you can do is to start to play catch up. Let it go, just make sure you execute the next run workout in your plan perfectly, to the letter. If injury strikes, don't try to run through it stubbornly, trying to, trying to stick to the plan. Instead, go and see a physio immediately. Once given the go-ahead to begin running again, do so cautiously in terms of volume. Resist the temptation to try those long runs in the first couple of weeks. Instead, just rebuild that frequency of training. Be realistic. It's better to get the return to running right first time with a progressive approach than to end up back at the physio clinic injured again in weeks after. Most of us have first-hand experience of what happens to our running form, especially once fatigue starts to kick in. Rarely in the last few miles of the race do you feel as sprightly as you do in the first couple of miles. Pictures and videos on the course often tell the full shocking story. There's no hiding from it. Once we hit a certain stage of fatigue, even the best athletes start to lose form to a certain extent. The key is to practice running with good form when fatigued so that your body gets used to this challenge. A good habit to get into is to maintain your cadence, your stride frequency, your turnover, when you start to get tired. This will have a positive effect on your stride length, posture, and a number of other factors that you want to maintain to maintain decent running form going forwards. It's no coincidence in my mind that many marathon runners get injured when their weekly long runs hit that 14 to 18 mile mark. It seems to range a lot of runners who could perhaps manage a comfortable regular 10K, 10 miler pre-marathon training, begin to lose form through fatigue significantly, and pushing the mileage on at that point only serves to increase stress on key joints, reinforce muscle imbalances, and start to encourage floor biomechanics. Of course, let's not lose sight of the fact that in marathon training, your weekly long runs are essential, arguably the most important element. So to avoid this breakdown in technique, Build up the mileage of your long runs gradually. Your legs need time to build the strength and endurance that only weekly long runs can build. As you fatigue, however, keep a close eye on form, and in fact, perhaps try running with a metronome.